2012. All of these developments are fully funded as a part of our business plan, together with the activities to keep these vehicles current as we go into the, into the next couple of years. All of this leading, of course, to a, more, a broader offer. As On the operational side, we will concentrate our efforts to Sweden. We will ensure that all the development and all the manufacturing is done in Trollhättan in Sweden. This will, of course, help us drive down our break-even level, meaning that at the typical saw volumes of 100, 120,000 cars per year, we will have a good return on our business. What we also see out in the marketplace today is a general attitude in the automobile industry towards more openness. And whereas the auto industry historically were focusing on creating volume through ownership, we now see more and more alliances being created uh, without necessarily having equity in each other. During these last 15 to 18 months, we have received numerous offers from big OEMs to small suppliers regarding cooperation. And as we go into a, a new organization, we will of course explore all these. One agreement that we already have in place is agreement with Beijing Automotive, an agreement where we bring know-how into uh, Beijing Automotive and they help us penetrate the very important growing Chinese market. An agreement that will continue to nurture and that will be extremely important as we go into the future. Many have, of course, asked the question, how will all this work? And most of them, maybe it doesn't have the insight into the business as many of, of us have, including myself. But I would say the answer is very simple. We have a fully funded business plan. We have an effective operation in Trollhättan, Sweden, with a great infrastructure where we gradually will increase our utilization and drive down the break-even point. We have a fantastic and unique brand and, I would say, in today's society, a very relevant brand. We have a great workforce, an excellent dealer network, and we have a customer base of one and a half million customers throughout the world. But last but not least, as an independent company, we decide priorities, we decide the technology to use, we decide with what partners to cooperate, and through the good relationship with General Motors, we have a great transition plan into a standalone company. All of this, in summary, leads me to conclude that Saab has a bright future. One person that shares my view in this regard is the CEO of our new owner, Spiker Corp. Without Victor Miller's belief in Saab and the tremendous energy and skills we would not be where we are today. Something that we at Saab are very grateful for. Victor. Thank you, Yonaka, for your kind words. It is um, truly a special moment to be here today and address you all. If uh, someone would have told me two years ago, just two years ago, one day you'll address about a million people that you own Saab, I'm sure that most of you would have burst out laughing. Because how can it be that a small company, a small manufacturer like Spiker, acquires a relative giant like Saab? And the only reason why that can actually happen is because of the amazing storm, the perfect storm I've called it, in this industry. The storm that caused giants to fall down and small companies to take opportunities that nobody had ever thought possible. We were there at the right time, at the right place, and we took the bold step to move in and save Saab. And it was worth every step of the way. It was uh, 93 days of 20 hours a day to make it happen, but it was worth it. It was particularly worth it when Yonarke and myself were confronted with the employees of Saab in Trollhättan. And if you were ever in doubt that we took the right step, 
we knew then that that decision was the right one to take. Saab is an iconic brand. It was worth saving. But now the real work starts. The honeymoon is over. It was a tough honeymoon, I must say. But the honeymoon is over, and now we have to get to work. Spiker is not a presumptuous company. We don't think that we're going to run Saab. We're definitely not. Saab is run by its own management, headed by Yonaki Johnson. Very capable management, very competent, and completely passionate about what is about what the, the journey we're about to set on. Spiker will bring to the table entrepreneurship, tenacity, a bit of knowledge about the premium segment of the market, and we will forge partnerships along the industry. The wonderful thing about this crisis is that it has changed the face of the industry. Whilst in the past, people would be very, companies, OEMs would be very conscious not to share their technology, that has changed dramatically. Because every boardroom throughout every manufacturer in this industry will be filled with one desire. How do we bring our break-even point down? Because nobody in his right mind would have been able to predict that you would see demand drop off the cliff at the pace of 40% in one year. And in the case of Saab, even worse, the uncertainty surrounding the brand, since it was basically put up for sale, did a lot of damage to those who entrusted themselves in the brand. That period has now come to an end. And I'm very proud that we can be the shepherds of this brand and we will look after it in the best possible way. Saab is an innovative company. Saab has always been on the forefront of technology, and it will be again. Saab has been known for its quirkiness, for its designs that captured the eye, for its intriguing history in the, in the sports arena. All these elements are still there, and they were given to us on a platter by GM. And we should be grateful for GM. They, to GM, they have invested a tremendous amount of money in Saab. But maybe along the line, somewhere, Saab lost a bit of its DNA, of its typical Swedish origins, of its wonderful aviation heritage, of its independent thinking. Well, as an independent manufacturer, that independent thinking will come in very handy to determine where to move next. We're very, very proud that we've achieved, achieved this. We're very proud of all those that stood by the company in its darkest days. I don't think there is any other brand in the world where people are rallying around the world, 60 or more rallies of people that are so passionate about the brand that they went into the streets and shouted, save Saab, save our brand. I think that is quite a feat. And it's, it's again underlying the tremendous loyalty of our customers. Saab needs, needs to win those hearts back. And the wonderful thing about where we are today is that the new products that have been set in motion years ago are ready for launch. We're looking here at the 95, a beautiful car which I would describe as a Saab Saab, a car which embodies the Saab DNA to the core. Very soon, we'll see the 94X again as Saab Saab. And in 2012, the successor to the still very successful 93. Those cars will pave the way for a very bright and profitable Saab. And I'm very, very honored that we can, part of them, can be part of them. I would very much like to express our gratitude to all of you coming here today and that we are available for the next hour or so to answer all the questions you may have. But I would very much like to underline that Jan Arke Johnson and his team never thought that it wouldn't happen. They kept on believing in this company and in its future. Without them, there would be no Saab today. Thank you so much.